Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much. And remember, our meetings definitely have uh, surfaced with the focus on resolving the issues and grievances within the PDP. But we will start our discussion this morning by first looking at the state of presidential race and the evaluation of the leading candidates before going straight into the reconciliation or no reconciliation within the PDP conversation. All right, to help us analyze these issues is uh, Faba Chaban in an Anambra State of the People's Democratic Party talking about Chief Dan Olasi right here in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and thanks for having me. Uh, great to always have you. Okay, let's, let's begin. I'm sure that you followed a bit of the newspaper review earlier and some of the leading stories on the papers had to do with politics. Um, perhaps I start with the one where it was said that the APC say they feel that they are better prepared than the PDP because PDP is busy bickering. But in terms of evaluating the candidates so far towards the 2023 election, what are your views? You know, there's something that is very unfortunate about my country. A lot of Nigerians, and it's unfortunate with the political elite, you know, have a relaxed relationship with the truth. I think that's the most decent way of saying, you know, that they're liars. And when you tell yourself a lie, that's the worst form of uh, explanation you can make for your shortfalls. You have to tell yourself the first truth and then start solving your problem from the basis of what you know. So, uh, but you see that in every class, that's a problem. It's either you develop convenient amnesia or self-denial. And that is why our problems are compounding by the day. If we're in a normal country, do you think APC would have ordinarily had the courage to go about talking about elections, campaigning to, you know, succeed itself, looking at the APC history? It is tragic to want to begin to, that Nigerians are not doing anything about it. When this country and APC was collecting 100, 100 million naira, and altogether had they made over 6 billion naira, and ASU, they couldn't sort out ASU problem, but they were glad to collect 100, 100 million naira. Not EFCC has asked any of them, especially those who are ministers, how did you get this money? Most of them have investigated. Water does not run in their various villages, unfortunately water. They just have boreholes in their compound. Their immediate neighbors don't have any reticulation to their various compounds. And these are the people leading you and me. And Nigerians are not protesting. So you start to wonder, are they, is Nigeria really ready for change? For the better? Are we feeling what the ordinary citizen is feeling? If such things continue happening from time to time, you know, you see where leadership takes decision not on strategic with strategic discipline but our arrogance arrogance of failure this is the only country where you see failure is celebrated uh. when a, a party tells you just take it uh, when a party in government tells you that where we are today is better than when they took over in 2015. all right chief. nobody's challenging them it's a pity uh. that's a summary of uh, before i start Discussing the various candidates. Okay, you know, that's the yes, because upside. that's exactly no. what we wanted to do yes. uh, as we speak now. Uh, campaigns will begin in uh, uh, the next couple of days, yes. and um, we will be looking at what the candidates uh, stand for and what they have for Nigeria. And even though at the moment we are seeing um, attacks on personalities, but let's leave that and get your assessment because you are very good at this. Your assessment of the, you know, let's say the major. Uh, uh, outstanding parties there now I mean the, the their candidates and what they have to give or to offer when the campaign starts regarding the 2020 well, like election. you know we, there are so many other candidates there are, if yes. we are going to be honest to ourselves there are only three candidates running for this presidential office there's not going to be any magic if Nigeria remains stable and won by next February either Peter will be Atiku or Tinubu will be president elect of Nigeria by the grace of God, if we remain one, if the security situation does not degenerate more than it is at the moment. So, in terms of analysis, 
it's easier for me because let me start with my friend and brother Peter B. Excellent. A well trained philosopher, psychologist, who ran Anambra for eight years excellently well. I don't know how many governors in this country can make the kind of reference we make about him. He was so excellent, even though I didn't know him before he became governor. I was chairman of PDP when Ngige was governor. And for one reason or the other, after I saw where he was coming from and what happened in the election, I lost my chairmanship because of him. Because on television like this, I said, no, he was the one who won the election and not my party. I don't think 95% of people will do it in this country. By the time I did it, I didn't know who Peter B was. It was a week later that led Jacob Mokolo, who owns Pascal Jacob Test, and who brought him to my house. And he said, you mean you haven't met this man? And people told him that he gave me about 50 million. What I'm just telling you, I said it in a, a caucus meeting in Enugu, in government house. And Peter got up and told him it was true. I never met him. Just like when I supported uh, Mwike. For the past five years, I've not said good morning with him, not on telephone, not face to face. I based my discussions on facts available to me for the betterment of this country. And you know, in this place, I'm PDP. I supported Soludo because I believed out of the candidates he has something to offer. And he's offering it. And I'm proud of it that he's doing well in Anambra, especially in security. So when you look at these three candidates, they're all qualified by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But in terms of performance, you only have two candidates who are very seriously contesting for this election. Peter will be on one side, and then I take over back on the other side. So the evaluation now comes to where is each one of them coming from? What are the antecedents of Nigeria? What are the experiences we have had? Especially respect to my people. You know, I have said once publicly that when a Shefu Shagare's children met a ghastly motor accident, and one of them died. Chuba Okadi, but now of blessed memory, asked me to lead him to go to Sokoto for condolence visit. And we went. We went to Shagari village. After seeing him, we were entering the vehicle to go. He called us back. 1984, February or March of 1984. He said that he lost his presidency because of us. And Chuba says, sir, what do you mean by because of us? He said, yes, that we can see how his people function. That they had imagined the equipment will succeed him after the next four years. And to stop a poor man from succeeding, they had to stop his own presidency. That nobody ever believed that a full animal would do a coup against a full animal. And who did it? The president, look at the coincidences. The present president of Nigeria did it. And they stopped a the poor man. Years after we went to Joss with a poor man, for another election, they stopped us again at Joss. 1979, they stopped the Namdi Azikiwe. Stopped a poor man. Now, Peter had gone from uh, 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 what is it called? Abga to PDP and now to, to Labour. And I said, there probably may have been things he knows or he saw that we don't know. Okay. And that's why when my last pro in my last program I said, it is important that charity has to begin, begin at home somehow. At least some of us who we are with him, he was our leader in PDP in Anambra State. We had a meeting with him at uh, in the Tushi Kuni First Center, and we're discussing how, you know, if the thing is zoned to the southeast, how one of them that have the capacity could become president. Suddenly he resigned from the party. Not even the courtesy of a telephone call, as close as I was with him, not the courtesy of a telephone call. I only saw him for the first time three weeks ago at a wedding, and if you saw it gone viral, we heard ourselves for almost uh, 10 minutes discussing. He said, as soon as he comes back from America, he's coming to Enugu. Because I've spoken with our governors. At least in the past four, or four weeks, there's nothing I've been doing that to tell that this is an evil boy and a promising one at that. Discuss with him, know where he's coming from. But he's in Labour Party. But I say he's very, very qualified. If he has the chance to be president of Nigeria, he will do excellently well. I believe so. But whether the equation, the alliances support that. Because there's so much hatred oh. against our people. Why? I don't know. It's completely uncalled for. But anybody deceiving himself about that, it must be living in a, a fool's paradise. Okay. There's so much hatred. All the widows have done in this country was to help others develop, civilize other places, develop other places, rather than their homes. Is that, is that the wrong things we have done? But That's I leave it to God. All right, let, that's one candidate you've talked about. Sure, sure. Let, let me, let me yeah. come in here because no, there is something you said. Yeah. I, I want to take on that. You said there are three candidates, but only two contesting yeah. seriously. 
Now, if if you look in, at in the... In terms of the analysis I made. Exactly. But let, let, let's come... You've mentioned two. You've talked yeah. about, you know, uh, His Excellency P. Toby. Yeah. And then, of course, Atiku Abubakar, mm -hmm. you mentioned him. But then, wouldn't it also, you know... Uh, because in, in the place of citizenship, everybody has a right to choose... Uh, whom to vote for, mm -hmm. and also analyze based on interest groups. You've yes. talked about the Southeast, there is the Southwest, there is the North, but there's only one Nigeria. Yeah. Now, looking in that context, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is also a candidate, whether we like it or not. Now, why do you think that there is a certain level of unseriousness towards his candidacy? If, well, if I may it, ask. I've answered this question yeah. by my first, my, the first comment I made, and I will refer back to this again when I finish this article. I have spoken of Peter B now, based on her question. Atiku is not just qualified, he's excellently qualified. And you know why? People don't know why most Igbos are given to us supporting him. In 1970, we were given 20 pounds in this country. People, I'm not among those who have a convenient amnesia. 20 pounds, and 90% of Igbos were doing importation. That was the only livelihood. They were selling their properties, wanting to import one thing or the other, to keep life. That was how I had the name first, Atiku Abubakar. He was a customs officer. And my people tell me that you come, when they don't have money even to pay for duty, he manages to release their goods. They go and sell and come back to pay duty. It is an illegal thing, but Atiku Abubakar was doing it for Igbos. So if you come to, I come from a community, I'm from Newe, where essentially everybody is an importer. So anywhere you go, they will talk about Atiku Abubakar. As early as in the 70s, when I was... Uh, I had entered the university. So we started hearing his name without really, there was no politics, but something must have engineered. He hadn't married an Igbo woman, but everybody tells you they did this because of Atiku. They did that because of Atiku. So his name was everywhere. So that was, he became a household name in Igbo land. Had so many friends. You remember when he was vice president, every Christmas he goes to uh, Orifite to stay at uh, Mekor Falls house. Mm -hmm. And it was known. Just like uh, I would tell, uh, 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 the former Prime Minister Tafa Abelewa goes to around this house to stay at Kehom by the West House every Christmas. These are people who have developed nationhood, that kind of love, that patriotism, the love of brotherhood that goes beyond their religion and their tribe. So I think it was already an accepted name in Iberland before he became Vice President. You know, so that is why I'm saying that he has an accomplishment that he can make reference to. As Vice President under uh, Obasanjo, he did excellently well. Nobody can, uh, I mean, uh, doubt that one. But when I talked about Tinubu, uh, 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 he was eight years governor of uh, Lagos State. He had one success. He had the ability to nominate those who performed after him. But I said, APC, which he's trying to run with, is it a party that anybody can in a civilized community, gladly go about saying because this party did this, you will vote for me. Because that's the only reference he's going to make. He won't tell us he was eight years governor of Lagos State. He has to tell us what this president has done to make Nigerians want to ask them to come. And I haven't seen that. Millions, not for me to answer, but for the rest of the country. Oh, yeah, Chief. Um, I hear you talk about, um, I've been kind to the Igbo man, I've been kind to my people, you know, I've done this and that for my people. And many would say, isn't it time we move away from, you know, um, ethnicity or religious issues when it comes to who becomes the leader of this country and look at someone who would deliver to, uh, you know, take Nigerians out of the uh, economic quagmire we are in now. And I'm asking this because if you're also looking at people who have done so well for the Igbo man, we can also uh, talk about Tinubu uh, when he was the, um, you know, governor of Lagos State. He was one man who was appointed an Igbo man to the cabinet of Lagos State and that has still uh, been working even up until now. So but I'm not looking at the ethnicity part of it. I'm looking at um, a man who has the quality and you know the ability to take Nigeria forward and move us away from this uh, what we're going through now. You see, what, what I'm saying is that in all elections, you know, now we can make reference. 19, 2015, you couldn't say APC did that. Nigerians based their support for uh, 
uh, APC because of the singular act, the perceived integrity value of uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari, honest man, this, this, retired general, former military head of state, what, the, every kind of adjective was used to describe him. But I was one of very few Nigerians, and I thank God that I was one of them, on Channel's TV. And I was asking Channel's, why don't you show it? When I said that this man is incompetent to run the affairs of this country. And I gave reasons. Why? And he's proven me right. He's proven me right. That he's not competent to run the affairs of this country. And he couldn't be bothered. Not just that he's not competent. He couldn't be bothered. That is the annoying aspect of it. The arrogance of failure. He couldn't be bothered that his country is collapsing. In a country where his men have taken over the rest of this country, killing people on a daily basis, every news you, you see, uh, television, uh, newspapers, Nigerians are dying in their hundreds. Unfortunately, in this country, we don't have appropriate statistics. Is that a reference Tinubu would make for Nigerians to vote for him? Even if there were good things he did in Lagos State, this can't lose it out. Because we're not talking about the you know, loss of human lives, properties, all across this country. It's no more. You know, let me tell you something. In 1979, I was in PDP. I mean, uh, sorry, PRP. Most of us, myself, late with the people married the SG Koko. We joined SG Koko. Late that he came, okay, okay, okay. So, at Enugu Airport, I've not made this public, but I have to say it because my friend just died about three or four months ago, Dr. Junaid Mohammed. He was the one who called me on the telephone. I said, Dan, do you remember what Aminu Kano told you at Enugu Airport? Because I asked Aminu Kano a particular question. And he said, Dan, that was the day he made me his special advisor for the whole East. He said, Dan, once you see crisis in this country, starting seriously in the North, know that we are approaching the beginning of the end. But we should not allow it to happen. All right, let, let's move and on. And that is where we are now. And somebody is actively sitting down, watching Nigeria. Oh. This you know, on this your program, I said about three, four months ago, that we are approaching the stage of uh, Afghanistan. Oh. Yes, you Every did. day, 100 people killed, 200 killed. Pregnant women, now in my zone, people are beheaded, people are being buried alive. Everything is happening in the country. All right, let, let's hope it doesn't get to that just yet. But moving away, the 2023 elections will definitely change or make you know this conversation. One of the parties looking at reconciliation and trying to bend, you know, build back their bridges is the PDP. There have been several meetings of reconciliation efforts. Of course, the govern governorship candidates uh, recently went to see uh, His Excellency Yinsung Wike, came, came out to say, well, there is no problem, there are no issues to resolve. However, there was also a delegation of the former presidential aspirants which had Mike Misin in that delegation, people like Sarah Misin. And then it leaves a lot of room for people to be able to guess that these conversations that are saying, you know, there is no trouble in, 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 in Kena land, that there is actually trouble. How do you review the crisis in the PDP and what's the way forward? Well, even though I will not go to the extent of saying it's a crisis, we have a process of trying to solve, you know, our problems internally where it is possible. But, you know, why it is worrisome is that this same candidate lost in 2019. And I believe as that uh, Tiko Abubaka is a very intelligent man. He should have made his own personal autopsy about why he lost in 2019. And should not have allowed this to degenerate to this level. You know, I learned something from late Dr. K. Ombariwa, that if you're looking for something from somebody, and it is something that's so important that if you don't have it, it might cost you, if not your life, but something serious to your family. As soon as you had the privilege to enter his office, just fall on the ground. Be turning around the ground. The man will say, ah, ah, what is it now? He said, please, Oga, oh you are holding my paper. If you send it, my family will eat. He said, that's all. And you send it. You can leave his door and say, what to him? But meanwhile, he has gotten what you want. I will expect this candidate, and I mean my candidate at the Kobubaka, to personally take a flight to Kotakot over lunch with his deputy, Okoa. Don't forget about I was against what happened in London. For me, it was tragic that we go to London to talk about a problem. We have a lot of beautiful towns and villages in this country where we can stay, eat a bacha, eat, uh, <laughs> no, no, eat anything, and it's got our problem. That was recklessness to the highest point of all of them, including Abbasanjo, 
Do you know the amount of money wasted for Nigeria in London paying hotel with eating food? That was stupid for all of them. And I felt so sad that we have to go to London to discuss local problems we can solve in one government office in Nigeria. So I'll ask Atiku Abubakar, enter a, a, a private jet. Get into a You don't need to uh, have an appointment. Just make sure the boy is in a protocol. Jump into his office and lock the door. Two of you will stay there. Discuss your problem. This word boy is the same thing that got me in rage. No, with a, the, no, with no, no, no. no. That, that, that's a different question. Why is the word boy? Uh, it's a lot okay. older than we get. <laughs> our, our national chairman has been funny, to say the least. And if you look at all the process of what happened in uh, the convention and how everybody had matched, what would have, that is the situation where silence is golden. I was shocked that he had even to open his mouth. It happened even a day after the convention. He saw uh, Tambowa and said, You are the hero of the convention. Okay. What makes him the hero of the convention? Because he did what he did in the field. And people criticized that. And it wasn't enough. He turned back to say that all those opposing him are children. And it is the children, of, the money of these children that made him chairman. He probably forgot how he came into the chairman. He forgot. So he wasn't helping the party. And this gives me the worry. I've told one or two very close of mine who are close to Atiku. I hope APC is not using some people close to you to destabilize you. Because this is exactly what I'm saying. You know, ask, tell me why my former PLP colleague uh, of uh, Jigawa and uh, uh, what is his name of Niger State who been opening their mouth so much. Welcome. This is somebody who was governor in uh, Niger State for eight years. And when she to run for senior, and, and you failed. Couldn't deliver. Do you have the mouth to talk? In that 2019 election, APC won Niger State. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Uh, I took a job, man. 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 You have and to I know what we have been discussing. Whatever is not what I will make public. Say something, say something. But what I'm saying is that silent. we cannot you know, allow the conventional media to continue to change. Because you know, yesterday I was on. We a, cannot uh, allow the conventional media to continue that, uh, to play down the situation. Yes. Uh, we continue to bring the situation yes. the way it is and the say it's straight away. The one in at the Hilton. Arise, arise, television. I was with them last night. You know, and they're prime time. And they ask me a lot of questions. And let's leave. But there's a lot of criticism, a lot of praise, and a lot of criticism when I said. That uh, he votes for uh, Peter Obis, they vote for Sinu. I said that's not what I said. People refuse to understand simple English. All I say that if the whole South is votes for Tinubu, I mean for Peter Obis, and we cannot translate that vote into a national victory, then it becomes an advantage of uh, an advantage to Tinubu, because uh, APC has no no stand in the uh, Southeast. It's more than 70, 80 percent the PDP area. So that was why I advised my brother. Come back, stay with your brothers, senators, this, that, 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 and sit down with them and just tell them, if there is something you know that they don't know, we are prepared to go with you. He's my priority, if I understand where he's coming from. But already, the government in Lagos is threatening Igbos in their markets already. They haven't won, but our people have been threatened already. This is the only country where anything we do is viewed as negative. All right, so let's look at this reconciliation effort. Uh, you were saying going to that before we, we got uh, got you into another discussion. Now the fact that you know um, seventeen governors, governorship candidates of the People's Democratic Party met with the governor yesterday, and we also saw in the papers today that the next meeting today will decide uh, we, we, that track we played earlier before this interview started. Uh, the Cardinal State Governorship aspirant, uh, our candidate rather, is saying that okay, as far as he's concerned. All matters have been settled. Uh, it's not something they want to bring to the public, what they discussed. But the next meeting today will decide uh, the fate of IU as the uh, party's uh, chairman. So going forward, uh, you said uh, Tiku should just go in and speak with uh, Wiki directly, one-on-one. -on -one. Do you think that is the only way we can come out of these uh, issues in the political party? Well, as I, now I think it's the only way. And I tell you honestly, because those supporting Wiki are not just supporting him, they are, as it were, they have thrown their life into him. It's true. 
There are about eight governors who are supporting him, and it's a serious matter. Let nobody be deceived about it. That is why I said only Atiku can solve this problem. Sit down with your younger brother, discuss the whole problem. If there are places to say, I'm sorry. Just like uh, late uh, Yeradoa said that the process that brought him was uh, illegal, corrupt, and he apologized to Nigerians. Nobody knew that a president can do that in this country. But he did that and set forward the motion to, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Restructure the electoral process. Unfortunately, he got sick and died. He would have done a lot more for this country, that young man, because I knew him personally. He would have done a lot more for this country because he has honesty, he has courage, but he died. So I would expect my presidential candidate to forget about what everybody else is saying. I'm not a member of NEC, so I don't know what they will discuss. But I've spoken with a few that I know will go there. It's even more compounded now with what I hear the chairman of our BOT is saying. And publicly too. So the problem is uh, getting belay by the day. And we don't want to allow it, that belay to increase. That's why I said it is incumbent on Atiku Abubakar to take off, land in Patakot, drive to government house, lock yourself up with your uh, younger brother and sort out our problem so that we can go forward. Mm. All right, but the one thing keeps uh, coming up, you know, during the discussions and all these meetings, and um, you see on the pages of papers, are you must go, are you position, you know, this appears to be one big problem that uh, if it is solved, maybe the PDP may move forward, and that is the fact that those in Wikis camp are asking for are you either resignation or stepping down for, from being the national chairman of the party. You also a member of the party. Do you think this is a big issue, really, for the party to resolve? You know. Uh uh, how you suffer from verbal diarrhea? Is that's that? your that's your chairman. So yes. we'll have to uh, be we we'll have to be. Uh, it's a very simple no, language. Have, no, we have to. No, no, we it's a very clean it. language. When you suffer from verbal diarrhea, it means you talk more than you are supposed to do. It's simple English. He's not supposed to open his mouth as national chairman of party to call people children, to call them boys. But that isn't the, even the issue. That the, is the, the main the, issue now. No, no, that's no. no the, the, the issue Look, is, I'm an is insider. That, I'm an insider, I so know, I will tell you what the issue is. Now I know, but now. the issues in public domain is the fact that, you know, the national chairmanship shouldn't, uh, chairman shouldn't come from the north while the president... Uh, it couldn't president have been the issue. should also come from that the That is where you, what you don't understand. It couldn't have been the issue if not for his utterances. If he had kept quiet in that the, the, the convention closed and we trying to reconcile every party, this would not have developed. Because ordinarily people would have told you he was elected for four years. Why don't we wait until after the election? If we win, then somebody else will take over. But because of his posturing, people are now saying we can't have chairman board of trustees in the north, have presidential candidate in the north, have a chairman of party in the north. That is why people are now looking beyond the call of duty to know things that are not proper. It is not proper. But these are things that would have been overlooked if he was a little uh, uh, circumspect with his comments. He wasn't. He became the superstar and opened his mouth more than he's supposed to. He's supposed to be a father for, to everybody, both to the winner and to those who lost. And even those who lost, like all of them, I feel sad now. Because they are now seeing the reality on the ground that if they don't take time, there will be an APC government next year in this country. And it will be tragic. Because nobody knows where that one is going to head, head us. That's just why I said, Atiku should leave whatever anybody is telling him. To jump into Potakot, sit down here with his brother, and discuss the problem. Should he be doing that alongside the national chairman? Because he he's also in the, 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 the chairman, Unless the national chairman will have the honor and integrity to make an open statement to the party today, that he was sorry for all the comments he had made, that it was inadvertent. That's what, I think he's a Christian. That's what a good Christian should do. There's nothing bad in saying, I'm sorry. All right. And that ends the matter. I'm telling you, it ends the matter. I have access, not direct, but I have unlimited access to, to Onye Sonwike through some of his very close uh, allies. Okay, so you're saying that this would definitely help in doubting the tension. It will help to doubt the te tension. A lot of a, lo a lot of it. A lot of detention. Well, what about the issue of are you stepping down? Because one of the things Wiki has also said is that I think that was on punch some days ago that the day of reckoning is coming for the PDP. 
do you think that resignation is is something it, this is exactly what i have been trying to be uh, uh, you know uh, uh, diplomatic about yes. without you know because the, 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 the consequences head. of his staying there without apologizing for all he has said is enormous all right so we'll have to leave it at that we well, thank you very much for my pdp chairman in anambra state chief dan olase has joined us to take a look at the problems in the PDP, but we began that discussion with assessing the candidates that are running to become number one citizen in the country. Uh, thank you so much for always your thoughts on that. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you notify each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember this. See you again.